It's also like podcast, the most authentic and most organic podcast out here, baby. Let's go. Same. Man, we are going to tap into a whole different industry, but right beside my guy, Dylan, for everybody that knows him. How y'all doing? And we're finally, finally, bro, mm-hmm. sitting down with DJ Birdwater here, baby. Let's yes, go. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me, DJ Birdwater, in the building. Ka-ka. <laughs> Ka-ka. I knew he was going to pull that BS, bro. I hey, knew it. I didn't. You should not have told him. <laughs> I didn't start this, okay? That's hilarious. Man, let's, let's get right into this, man. You are somebody huge in the cannabis industry. Mm-hmm. You, you guys, you're a part of one of the biggest here in L.A., right? Yes, yeah. <laughs> Big Chief. Yes, sir. Man, let's talk about this, bro. We're, we're going to take a little bit back, right? I think it's only, it's only right it's only that right, we yeah. that we give this guy his flowers. Where did DJ grow up in, bro? Uh, originally from East L.A., but majority of my life, Covina. Mm. Yeah, bro. When did you make that transition or when that transition was? Um, Probably around second, third grade. Oh, yeah, really? Second, third grade, we moved out of the... East L.A. because we were, like, in bad areas, and there's just a lot of stuff going on between family. So we moved to my grandma's in Covina, Mm. and we stayed with my grandma for a minute, and, like, a bunch of my uncles and stuff lived there and stuff like that. Like, it was like a family Mexican house, bro. No, I'm half Filipino, half Mexican. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Respect, respect. Are you only child, middle child? Uh, There's five of us. I'm the middle child. Uh, Two younger brothers, two older sisters. I'm the oldest boy. Yeah, bro. Yeah, responsibility then. Yeah, 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 for sure. Oh, so this this is going to be perfect to the whole transition into it, but how was the up, upbringing? For anybody knowing, you are, again, part of the, one of the biggest cannabis distributors here in L.A., mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Legend. You're around amazing people, a lot of influencers, a lot of people that smoke, a lot of people that need their therapeutic set, yeah. right? Were you always in this game of cannabis? No. Um, I was actually, oh, like, trying to avoid drugs. <laughs> I didn't want to be no part of it, bro, because I come from a background where my mom was a drug addict mm. growing up. So it's like I wanted to be everything opposite of that. So I was, like, part of the D.A.R.E. program in middle school. I wanted to be a cop in high school. I decided I wanted to be a cop. Went to college to study criminal justice, and I wanted to stay away from drugs, bro. Yeah. But in high school, I smoked for the first time, and, like, I fell in love with it. <laughs> I fell in love with it, bro. Hey. Wait, so, let for that part, why did it happen, though? Because I know, forever watching, I, I know a <laughs> lot of people are going to, like, oh, you guys... We all done it. Yeah. I mean, bro, it's weed. It's cool. Yeah. Come yeah, on. Right? It's, Come on. It, it's almost normal now. <laughs> it, it just depends on how you use it. Right, right. Right? It, like your abuse. Like if you only, if you made 50 bucks this week mm-hmm. and you're wasting $45 on the stash. Okay, okay. Yeah. That's, that's, a, that's an issue there. Yeah. Yeah. There's an yeah. issue, right? You have an yeah. issue there. Yeah. I will say I did stop. I stopped smoking for a long time because mm-hmm. my sister socked me in the face. <laughs> Swear. But, but the good thing <laughs> is I was high as shit mm-hmm. that I didn't feel it. Okay, but her words is what hit. So yeah, yeah. that brought me there. But like, why did you try it, and why did you fall in love with it? So, uh, my se- beginning of the senior, year, I tried it with my two best friends, mm. and I only did it because they did it. And I know that sounds like, you know, what I'm saying, but I'm just keeping it a thousand with you. Like you're a product of your environment. You feel me? And in high school, we're like straight edge. Like we drink a little bit, but we played football. But if my best friends are gonna try it, bro. My guys. You're running with them. I'm, I'm, yeah, we're all going to get faded, bro. And, and the crazy thing is when I smoked the first time, I didn't even get high. I didn't. No. Nope. Did it, was, it, was it some whack-ass weed no, no, or no, you no, just no, didn't what, what was back then? Like it was like cook. some orange kush. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, kush. Yeah. I'm 32. So You're young, though. I'm still young. But, yeah. like, orange kush was, like, one of those good strains back then when I'm in high school, like, 07, 08. Okay. You know what I mean? Yes. And, uh. Yeah, I smoked weed. I smoked weed the second day. I love getting high, but I was also trying to be a cop. But I got kicked out of the Explorer program because I told him I smoked weed. And from there... Wait, so it was not even a drug test. You were just like... Well, it was an interview. Don't you think it's fucked? Because I I know when they... Whoever's going to be like a cop or in the law enforcement, 
they want you to be completely honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you become completely honest and... Shut, yeah. sh- bro. You're gone. It backfires yeah. on you. It backfires. backfires so much. I was like, what? I thought Did you guys he... wanted honesty. So, that, yeah. But because your mom was a drug addict mm-hmm. and you start, you try to weed for the first time. Yeah. Is there an emotion that happened during that time? Because you just said you didn't want to be that way, but here you are trying this. And the reason why I want to bring that up or shine light on it, because growing up where a lot of us grow up, whether it's in L.A. or whatever city you're in, there's always, you know, you would quote unquote the bad parts. Yeah. The ghetto parts. The ghetto parts. The bad group of people. Mm -hmm. And for every Hispanic household, if you smoke weed, you're you're part of the the streets and and whatever the case is. What is that? What did that do to you? How do you maneuver through that? Like, your mom was a drug addict. You didn't want to be a part of any sort of drugs, but mm-hmm. here you are because of your best friend. Right. Trying this. Yeah. So, I knew the mental strength that I had at the time because of everything I've gone through growing up. So I tested myself. I stopped smoking the second time I smoked. The following day, for five six months, I didn't smoke. I was like, let me see <clears> if <throat> I could be addicted to this. Let me see how I react to it. And honestly, bro, I wasn't craving it. I was like, I don't have an addicted personality. It's all about a pick and choose type of type, type of mentality. And I chose not to do it. So when I realized that I had that mental strength to be disciplined at such a young age, I was like, bro, I could smoke weed, but I don't need to do anything else. You know what I mean? Because weed isn't affecting how I'm thinking. What do you, so what are you now being in, in this position that you're in, like seeing – those youngsters abuse this. Yeah. Like, what's, is there something that you do personally that you want to be doing to, like, help them? Or so, or something that maybe helped you to not be as addictive to this as when you started? Yeah. So, like, I'm going to be very honest with you guys. Like, I've gone through, like, so many different situations coming up. And what I've realized is that the people that never really had to work for something or never be challenged compared to the people who've always had to prove themselves and, and try to make something of their life because they didn't have much, those, two di- those are two different mindsets. So I feel like the people that don't, aren't challenged, that are handed stuff to them, they don't really understand the, the, the true meaning of that, ment- that mental strength, and they don't understand how to move, what direction to move, or how to move accordingly to where it doesn't affect you. And I figured that out at a young age. When was that? Shit, 16? It just, it's the survival type yeah. of mentality you have. Yeah, you know? bro, survival. You're trying to, bro, you're trying to survive out here, bro. It's yeah. literally. Well, what's that survival, though? So, like, because, we're, especially. We're, we're two different people, yeah, too, bro. Yeah. I mean, no, we are, for sure. And that's why the dynamic is good. Because if you're two of the same people hanging out together, then there's probably going to be no growth. Like, right. if we're the same, there's probably not a lot that we're going to learn from each other because we're just going to agree. Facts. With everything. Yeah. But when you have disagreements with whoever you're around, it's mm-hmm. like, all right, why do you come up with that answer? Why do I come up with that answer? And all right, what can we come up with? Right, right. So that that is why, like, when, when people say we're in survival mode, I think that term just, for a lot of people, just became an excuse. Right. They acted the way they acted because they were in survival mode. Yeah. But in reality, survival mode was just a term that they came up with at that time they could. Yeah. But it's like, yo, if you just take a breath, if, it, yeah. if you think about it just one more yeah. time. No, you're absolutely right. So, so like, for me, I guess I would not really. So, for me, in that point of stage was, like, I was I was already thinking about the future about it at a young age. Mm. My mind was already, like, all right, I, I can't do this because I don't want to be looked upon like this. I can't get locked up because then I can't be a cop. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to become a drug addict because then no one's going to fuck with me. My family's not going to like me. You feel me? So I was just like, I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it low key, but I'm not going to do it to where it dictates my life and my mood and stuff like that. You can't let stuff control you, basically. And at a young age, I had to realize that. Mm. Yeah, bro. Was there something that con- that took over your life at a certain point? Was it something? Yeah, was there something in your life Growing up or even up until, uh, you would say, in your early 20s. Yeah. Where something just took over your life that you're, now that you look back upon, you're just like, damn, why did I allow that shit to take over me? No, nothing's ever took, taken over. Nothing's ever dictated 
where I was moving in life. Mm-hmm. Everything I've done has been based off choice. Off decision, bro. Like, you always had a choice? I feel like everyone has a choice, bro. You just got to sit there and figure out your options, and you decide where you want to go, what direction. I did that a lot. Because, bro, like, I'm in a situation growing up where I'm like, I don't got a lot to do. There's not a lot of money. Yeah. There's not a lot of, sh- you know? There's a lot of time to think more than anything. And I, I, ch- I understand that I cherish that time to think. Because it allows, like, self-awareness, you know what I'm saying? Gotcha. It allows you to be more mature and to see things at a clearer perspective. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to live that little. I never wanted to let my mom or my past, the poverty or all this shit, hold me down. No one even knew. I never told anyone. I kept that shit within me. Because mm. I didn't want no pity, bro. Yeah. Because I was like, there's people out here living harder than me. Shit, I don't know what you got going on at home, but that I'm not going to give you my problems. You yeah. feel me? I would literally lock this shit in. Damn. Yeah, that, that takes a lot, though, because it takes a lot. But how you said, I don't want nobody to feel sad for me. Yeah. I don't want nobody to feel bad that I'm going through a situation because maybe to me it may be a bad situation, but to the next one mm-hmm. that maybe has it two times as worse mm-hmm. is battling a lot more tougher demons that I'm battling. Yeah. So th- then that question comes into, do you feel like you think better when you're high or when you're sober? That's a good question. Because <laughs> <Yo. laughs> what, what they say when you're drinking, you have you cl- you think clearly, right? <laughs> like all the all the emotions come and shit like that. The truth comes out. That's, there you go. And then when you talk to people that smoke, like oh, it just helps me relax, man. Yeah. And I, I meditate. Yeah, it would help me sleep. Yeah, you don't sleep though. No, it would like when I used to when I used no. to, when I used to smoke. <laughs> um, it would help me sleep. Yeah, I have no idea. What kind of? Sh- <laughs> I had no idea what the fuck I was smoking. What kind of type of strain? Yeah, nothing. It's because it's because we're those foods that. Uh, what is it? Is that indica sativa? Mm-hmm. Ah, I'll take that. What well, flavor? It was. It was one day we're coming. We're coming <laughs> to film here, and uh-huh. obviously we're coming down from this end over here. So we spent you know the stizzy, stizzy, yeah, yeah. stizzy's for cross street. Right so I was like, hey, bro, and I was I was already thinking about. it. I was like, bro, maybe I need CBD pills or <laughs> gummies or something like to be able to sleep. It was the worst. And I was like, you know what? I was like, bro, stop real quick here. And he's like, he looked at me all crazy. I was like, no, nah, I'm being serious. Stop. That was the he's first like, time I ever walked into a stizzy. Oh, same really? here. Yeah. Same here, bro. It was the first time I, was, I walked I into was like starstruck. I was when like, was Whoa. this? Oh, this was like beginning of our journey here in LA. So, damn, year. Almost a year like, ago. Almost a year ago. Okay. And um, I was just asking, the, the, there's a chick there. Obviously, they're all attractive as well. Right, right, right. So, I mean, I'm trying to act like I know everything, what the fuck is going on and this and that. So, I'm like... Oh, uh, what do you recommend? You know, I'm, I'm trying to get some indica and this uh, and that. And she's like, oh, this one's good. But this one's actually pretty good. And this one's better. And I was yeah. like, fuck, how do I act? Like, I know what the <laughs> fuck I'm doing, bro. Trying to be cool. Yeah, so I'm like, I just give me this one. I got a little um, little cart and uh, what do you got? The disposable? It's not. Is it disposable? Well, no, it's recharging. Tell- I don't you're, fucking know. You're talking to the guy that yeah, just yeah. says yes. <laughs> yeah, he got the same thing as me. And I was like, yeah, I'll take that right there. <laughs> and... Um, we got in. That's the only. That's the only reason why I was smoking because it yeah. would help me sleep. Okay. It was. I have a lot of thoughts. Yeah. When I go to bed, and uh-huh. that doesn't let me sleep. Mm-hmm. So, when I would smoke, it would just like calm that down just a yeah. little, tone it down enough to where I'm like, okay, I can sleep now. Lowers down the. That's good. The lowers volume, down the volume. Whatever the fuck is yeah. in there, but like. Yeah, like for me, bro, weed helps me in every single way. Like I don't. One thing I don't do is I don't wake up urge uh, with the urge to smoke. Toke it right away. No, like. I, I let my body and my mind wake up, and then I start smoking, like, when I'm on my way to the office, um, which is usually two or three hours after I wake up. Um, but weed helps me in every single way. I could focus more. I could work out better. I can think better. I can relax better. I can laugh better. You know what I'm saying? And I don't need it because I there's days where I just don't want to smoke, but I choose to smoke every day. I want to smoke. I want to do everything high. Everything. I'm, I could function, do business meetings faded. I do it all. Are you faded now? Yeah, yeah. We smoked two blunts on the way here. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Look, hey, when I pulled up, I low-key passed the parking lot because I was faded. No, I'm like, come back. I, was, I drove past. I was like, why is Google Maps taking me around? But I didn't realize I was this high. And I realized, like, oh, we can't walk this far. So we had to turn back. But, yeah, I, I do everything high, bro. And weed, weed does not affect me, bro. Like, I have so much control over my mental and what I want to do in life. And I understand it from such a clear perspective that 
I could do everything high and you won't even know it. Damn. So for how do you get there? How do you figure out that balance where how you you're saying it right now? You basically choose you in the morning. Right. You dictate your morning and how it goes. You right. dictate when you want to smoke and you dictate what to do with like how to handle the situations as they come. Right. But how do you do that when for every person listening in that if you're high, then you don't you don't know what you're doing. Right. You're, how, how do you balance that? Yeah. I think that's what he's trying to say. So like, because there has to be volumes, right? Right. Of course. There has to be like a point where like, damn, I'm too high. Yeah. Or like whatever the case is, but you're maneuvering your life like if it's just regular, right? And you're not letting that volume on the side turn way too high up that frequency that yeah. you just are not allowed to function. Yeah. Compared to the other foods that abuses, and they pass out. And then their whole day goes by. Right, right. Because there, there's going to be a question that I'm going to bring up in a little bit, but how do you balance all that? Your whole day, your mental, your emotional, and your business side. Mm-hmm. So I've, I've essentially created a life that's based off how I want to live. And I'm in a position to where I control my day, my time, my money, people around me, the time I spend with my family, my son, basically, like, I know what I can do and what, how I need to live, so I do it accordingly to that. Mm-hmm. And I, if th- I know it sounds complicated, but, because uh, we skip, like, I don't want to skip over what I got through to where I'm at now, but yeah, no. basically, bro, like, I'm in a different position than your average person. Like, I don't got to go to the office. I could work from home and still make shitload of money. And it's not even about money. Like, I just reached a point of success with my friends. Shout out to my boys who put me in position to where I have complete control over my day, my week, my month. And the only thing I'm stressing about is what's the next move? How can I elevate? I'm not worried about the other stuff. So I'm in a position where I don't have to worry about the stuff that your average person worries about Mm -hmm. because I got a whole team. I got, we got employees, you know what I'm saying? So... I put myself in a position where the ba- bills are always going to get pilled, paid. Money's always coming in. Now we're just elevating, and I'm in a position where I don't have to stress over stuff that other people stress about because of where I'm at in life now. And that alone is different. You get what I'm trying to say? Hell yeah. Like, I don't have to stress about stuff that your average person stresses about anymore. But you got to that point. I got to that point. So let's, he just said it. There's things that we missed. Yeah. How did you get to this point then? Because people don't, this is why, and this is why I love our podcast, our show, our movement for everybody. Make sure you subscribe and tune in. People think that this type of success, this type of following views, visuals, whatever the case, whatever they opinionate, they think it came in a year and just overnight. Yeah. And it came by working minimal hours. Right, right. Like if this was a part-time job. Right. It's like, nah, bro, this is a full-time job and more. Yeah. You're facts. putting you're putting double overtime on overtime because yeah. if this doesn't work, then you're up, how you said, you're up into late late hours mm-hmm. trying to figure out how, to, how you're going to make it work. Right. And even after you spend six, seven months into this a year mm-hmm. and it's not where you want it. You're just like, do I give up now or do I keep going? Yeah. It's a complete option. Yeah. And for a lot of people, they take two months and they quit. Yeah. In this podcast world, they take 10 episodes and they quit. Yeah, yeah. It's like, what the hell is wrong with you, bro? Like, I'm not going to give you my answers when I know you're going to, you don't even want to research yourself. Facts. Not to blast on anybody, but it's like, bro, how do you start a podcast? Mm -hmm. Search it up on YouTube. Do what we did. Search it. Search it up. It's not that hard. No. It's not that hard. How do you how do you smoke weed? It's not that hard. <laughs> Search it up. How do you roll a blunt? It's not that hard, but you gotta practice makes perfect. Right, right. Everybody can try to roll a blunt, right? We're gonna because we're sitting sitting here with you. Yeah. Everybody can try to roll a blunt and we'll do an okay job. But to be perfect, you have to practice. Right, right. You know? There's, um, there's there's this saying I heard at a podcast. I forgot exactly what podcast, but it says most people want to waste a million dollars, but most people don't want to make the million dollars. Yeah. Mm. So, obviously, to make a million dollars, you got to work your ass off. It's deep, yeah. Yeah. It's, 
But if they give you a million dollars on a spot, bro, you're wasting in seconds. And a million dollars is easy to make. Oh. <laughs> Wait, but I heard. Whoa, so there, buddy. <laughs> I, I heard it from somebody that when someone makes their first million, they don't stress about it because they know they can do it again. Yeah, it's true. The, the stress yeah. is making the first million. Yeah. After that, it's like, nah, I could do this shit again. Yeah, true. And instead of one, why am I going to one? Why can't I double it up, go to two? Right. Double two, exactly. go to four, and right. then whatever the. Yeah. Whatever. So, how do you get there though? Like you're so, you're talking in such a position <laughs> where, besides the fact that you're maybe high, you're talking in such a position like you're at a, a same place. Yeah. Like you you're talking from a situation that you've been through a lot, and you know you've been through a lot, and you're now finally hit a spot in your life where you're just <sighs> yeah. In, in order in, in order to hit that peaceful mindset, that peaceful. Mm -hmm. Lifestyle, you have to go through a lot of shit yeah, to lot. be able to reach this. Yeah. So, like, let's back up. So, I'm 32. I'm still very young. But when I was, let's just go 25. When I was 25, um, I was in the bodybuilding scene. I was in the fitness industry. Um, and I was also a full-time driver at FedEx Express right here in L.A. Full-time, 10-hour days in a truck, literally delivering, like, that real grind, which is one of the hardest jobs I've ever did, literally. So. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, you know about that? Yeah. 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 Bro, it's Amazon a, it's over a there. Bro, that, it's, it's a, a crime. Bro, you look back, you're starting your day, and you bro, see what? You, you see all those fucking things. I'm going to get like, 300 packages done in <laughs> like eight, yeah. 10 hours, bro. I got to go up 10 flight of stairs. Yeah, Fuck. Bro. So and the like, fact that you, you look back, my bad, bro. Yeah, the no, fact you, you look back and you don't see that shit start reducing, you're like, it takes three, four hours to get a quarter of those packages <laughs> yes, done. Yes, bro. bro. So it yes. never looks, it looks never ending, bro. And so. I started working at FedEx at like 23 and a half, 24, bro. And when I started working there, I started observing. Whenever I go somewhere, I observe. And I was like, bro, like these people are fucking fucked up. Can I cuss? Yeah. Fuck yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> I was like, these fucking people are fucked up, bro. Like this dude's limping. This dude's back's all fucked up. They've been here for 15, 20 years and they're barely making $80,000. I'm like, I'm only going to be here four or five years. I'm 23 and a half, four or five years, like. By 25, I was making around like $60,000 a year because I was putting in work 10 hours a day, overtime working holidays. Which is nothing. It's nothing. Yeah. <laughs> it's nothing, right? At the time, that, I was like, bro, this is no money. I'm working like a fucking slave and this <laughs> ain't no money, bro. And uh, I started thinking like, all right, bro, like, this ain't going to do it. Like, it's going to take me another 15 years to touch 100 bands. I'll be 45, 50 by that time. Like, that is shit money. That's too, that's that's a whole quarter of your life. Like, and I'm really thinking like this. Yeah. But I got to pay the bills. So as I was working at FedEx, bro, I just started doing other shit. I started doing videography. Mm. I started figuring out what are my hobbies. I love working out. Let me start training. So I'm working a full-time job, training clients. After training clients, I'm going to go freelance and work for little money to go edit videos for people at night. Like, really hustling, bro, three, four hours of sleep for at least three years from 24 and a half to 27. Why not give up? That's hard. Yeah. That's hard. Working all those hours, yeah. working all those different type of jobs for to no make money. ends meet. Little money. Yeah. Why, like, why not give It's easier. Yeah. Because you got to believe. This person did it. This person, you, you hear it all the time on social media nowadays. This, the most successful people have struggles. So I'm like, I got to go through my struggles. I'm all in. All in. Yeah. All in. Yeah, all in. There it is. <laughs> you know I, what I'm saying? Exactly. I'm all in. And I'm sitting, bro, at this point, I want you guys to understand, at this point where I'm going through this, all my money's going to bills. I barely have money to eat. I'm renting a room out. Mm -hmm. My bills are good. My bills are good, but I'm not. You know what I'm saying? I'm stretching $50 for a week on food type shit. Like, I'm really going through it. You know what I mean? I'm late on some bills. Like, bro, you think about the money, but when you hear $60,000, you are getting taxed. You feel me? But I have my own bills. I don't live with my parents. I moved out at 23, and I said I'll never move, go back. Like, cause That's I wanted... a different type of stress. Yeah, it's a whole different thing. Yeah. <laughs> You're a man, right? Yeah. You, and that's my mentality. I'm a man. I come from that Mexican background, like, you got to be that guy. You're the oldest son. You got to be that guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. You guys are Mexican, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. And there's, 
there's like a honor behind that. You get what I'm trying to say? There, there's. I feel that because shit. There's been days, bro. Let's let's not tippy toe around this. There's days where you have a hundred dollars mm-hmm. and your light bill is ninety. Right. What are you gonna choose? Well, right. I'm gonna pay my fucking light bill. Right. And if I have ten dollars for the week, mm-hmm. fuck it, it is what I'm it is. Stretch it. I'm gonna stretch that money. And, and, and <laughs> just like I told you, no one knew about shit. Yeah, I'm gonna still smile. I'm gonna yeah. still do my thing. Why? Because I'm not gonna give in. Mm-hmm. Call my parents, yo. Mm-hmm. I'm coming home because no, there's no, there's no, there's no retracting anymore. No, fuck no. I'll take a couple sets back and yeah. and I'll look at the financials. What did I do to? Oh shit! It was that okay, but I'm never gonna go all the way back because, and then what is it? It's my word is my bond. Yeah. My word is my power. So if I set out to do this and I fall, I better get myself back up. Facts. I feel like that doesn't make you like. Let's say, like you said, a hundred dollars left in the bank account. Your light bill's ninety, bro. Mm-hmm. You have ten dollars at the end of the week. Are you broke? Hell no, because I paid my bills. You're, you're, bro, yeah. you're not broke. You're responsible I, as we, fuck. We are you a know? different type of broke. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> We're a different yeah. type of broke. Yes. Just, like, my broke is not your type of broke, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. And But you got to get to a position where instead of, like, what is what is rent even in L.A.? Like, I think around here is like three, four grand for a studio. Yeah. yeah. But it's just like, dude. We've made money before, even 60 bands, right? Mm-hmm. You made 60 in a year. Saving up three bands a that's month, hard. that's just hard yeah. as a motherfucker. Because yeah. you, you break, I'm, I'm a numbers guy, and that's where I feel like helped me out a lot. I started breaking down, I'm sorry, I started breaking down numbers. Yeah. And it didn't make sense. So, like, that's why I had to do those three jobs. I had no time to socialize. I was in the gym, sleeping, in the at my uh, one bedroom apartment that I was renting out at a friend's house and just working most of my day, bro. And it got to a point where I had enough. And I was like, I gotta, I gotta bet on myself. So I had quit FedEx. I was like, I'm not gonna tell anyone. People are gonna judge me. My family's gonna think I'm stupid. My ma- the boss, my boss thought I was stupid. I cashed out on my 401k just to have money saved up for backup, you know what I'm saying? That's stupid, right? People would think. You're stupid as fuck. You, you can't like I don't want people around me that that you're a liability. If you're, I got so much going on. That it's like, bro, like if you're not an asset, like why do you got to be in my life? I got best friends. Yeah, if if, if you're not ready to bring, it's like a potluck, bro. Mm-hmm. To, cheers, a toast cheers, to all you guys. Cheers, cheers. A toast to all you guys. If you're not ready to bring food to the potluck, mm-hmm. and you're only bringing a plate to go, mm-hmm. stay away, bro. Facts, bro. Toast, my guy. But. Man, that was already the intro to the second part, bro, because it's good. <laughs> Shit, what are we leaving leave off? So we left off with, like, I cashed out my 401k. Oh, yeah, yeah, true. The stupidest thing you ever can do. <laughs> At what, 20, 25 and a five. half, about to be 26. And the only reason why I did that, bro, because I was on survival mode. Yeah. I had to think for the next couple of months because mm. I needed a – Something to hold me down for the next couple months so I figured it out. And when I left FedEx, bro, the following day, I got a job as a trainer at Gold's Gym in West Covina. Eee. And so I started doing training for a couple hours a day, shit money. But at night, I would drive to L.A. to go work for someone that was in the cannabis industry, and this is where it comes. Oh, shit. Here we go. In. Okay. So I was doing videos for this guy. Can't say his name. Were you smoking already at that time? Oh, I was big smoking. Okay. Was big, <laughs> big smoking. We, gotta, we just got to yeah. clear that up. You know, it wasn't night but to day. I want everyone to understand before we move on is because the 401k thing is big. Yeah. Right? Right or wrong. Yeah. So I did that because I was on survival mode because I knew these next months or year were going to be one of the hardest times in my life. I just accepted it. Mm. And it was. The next two years, from 25 to 27, were the hardest times of my life. So I'm working as a trainer, making shit money, a couple hundred dollars every two weeks. But I'm also driving to L.A., working for $100 to shoot for four or five hours. And then from like four to 10, four to 12, four to one, four to two for $100. Then right when I go edit or right when I get home, I'm editing until I finish the video and then I go to sleep. Then I wake up. So I'm only three, four, five hours sleep tops. Then start training. After training, I did that for like a couple years, bro. 
But then I started freelancing, started being more of a person to optim- uh, maximize your time. So I started doing other side jobs, charging people $100 to do videos for their fitness page. You know what I'm saying? Then I landed a few sponsors as a uh, as a fitness person. You know what I mean? So I was, like, getting some money off sponsorships. and But, bro, I was struggling. I was struggling, my guy. I was struggling from 25 to 27, and no one knew. Not my family. Maybe one of the girls I was dating at the time. But I didn't accept help. I'm going to figure this shit out. I'm gonna, and I figured it out. It took me years. But I figured it out. But why not give up or ask for help? Because I, I, when you believe in yourself, nothing seems un- impossible. Nothing. And I really mean that. Like, I don't know. I might sound crazy, bro, but... I just took a leap of fucking faith yeah. because there is some inside of me that made me be like, I'm going to do this shit. I don't know when it's going to happen. I don't know how it's going to happen. That's the beauty about life. You never know when or how it's going to happen. And it happened. And so I'm working for this fucking guy, right? Doing videos for shit money, bro. Treating me like shit. Like, but you got to suck it up, bro. <laughs> like, yeah, there's some lie. Hey, life ain't ain't fair, bro. Life ain't fair, but you gotta go through shit to get somewhere in life. Facts. And where I I'm working for the same guy where I met my current business partners, which is one of them was supposed to come today. Mm-hmm. Big Chief. He's the face of our brand. Um and Beard and all food. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then him and his brother look alike. Shout out to MJ, shout out to Mo. Those are my brothers. Like we came up together, bro. Like we started from the bottom, my guy. So we're all working for the same fucking guy. And then to kind of cut it short, like the guy moved his way and we went our way. So when he went his way, everyone was like, I'm sorry, everyone was trying to figure it out. And I, I'm I'm cutting the short story. Mm-hmm. But like I'm 27 and a half, about to be 28, you feel me? I started c- training more clients. I started competing. I started making some money, bro. Training. I figured it out a way. And I'm working as a manager at a gym. And I'm still doing videos for free. But I'm, I'm making about eight, ten thousand 10000 a month. Hustling. Hustling, bro. Getting it. Getting it, bro. No excuses. Yeah, you're not you're not making that type of money a month when you're not when you're just sitting on your ass doing you're nothing. Just sitting on your ass. Working your night at five and you say you're tired after yeah, three hours. Bro, I'm training. I'm working twenty hours a week with my cli- around twenty hours a week with my clients doing videos at night, competing, being in bodybuilding shows, and I'm making eight to ten thousand a month. Think about that. Break the numbers down. Break the numbers down. If you're not a mathematician, ten times ten. Come on, bro. <laughs> Add the zeros, homie. No, nah, ten times twelve. Yeah. Six plus figures. But for like the people that can't do yeah. ten times twelve, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? They, they, they go a little lower. Yeah. Whoa, 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 there. <laughs> so like, when I was competing, I was still involved in the cannabis industry, helping my friends out. But in in that part where you're just the content side of I it, I was just the con- okay. content. Okay, all right, cool. Content only. I had my role because my boys were the the fucking. These guys are smart, bro. These guys they're younger than me. They're they're five years, seven years younger than me. 26, 27 or something like that. So imagine I met them five years ago, six years ago. They're 21, 22. When I first met them, I knew they were going to be fucking successful. I knew it. I was like, I got to rock with these guys. Whatever that I need to do, I'm doing it. Yeah. Whatever it is. And I'm older than them. I don't give a fuck. Because the mindsets were the same. The energy was the same. The ambition, the determination was all the same, and it clicked. And I was like, I went home. I was like, these are the guys I'm rocking with. Yeah. They're gonna, they're gonna lead me to the promised land. Like you get, you can't make that up, bro. When someone brings that same energy, same similar mentality, same ambition, mm-hmm. like that's the word, bro. Ambition. Yep. You know when, like, you're talking to certain people, like when we were in the room with, with some amazing motherfuckers, like yeah. yourself right now, dog. Like, you know. When you're meant for more, yeah. when you're just like, yeah, I yeah. know where we're going. Mm-hmm. I know we're going to sit at the same table mm-hmm. in this fucking place up here, and we're going to look back at everything yeah. we just went through. Yeah, bro. And not even right now. We're going to look at this shit in a year. Yeah. Like, right now, we're sitting, we sit at a blessed position, mm-hmm. but we remember when we came and we're running two, three episodes a day to try to make it 
Like we couldn't afford to come every week. Yeah. The fuck? That was that was crazy. Yeah. Coming to LA every weekend to do content mm -hmm. and see what that sacrifice was like. Mm -hmm. Oh, you it's a lot. It's a lot, bro. That's what people don't understand. And yeah. and what people never understood was why do I have my guy here is back all the time. Mm -hmm. It's like, man, this motherfucker came with me when I didn't even right, know exactly right. what this was. Real mm -hmm. one. Yeah. Like, I told him, I, like, I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. I don't know where we're going, but just know we're in LA. We're mm -hmm. going to do content. We're going to mm -hmm. do this. And I just need your help. Yeah. Fuck it. Run it. It's, 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 that, that. It's, it's that key word. Like you said, obviously, same mentality, same ambition and everything. Yeah. But I think the key word from there is, is the faith. Yeah. You know, I had faith in this dude yeah. and his picture of what he had in his mind. Mm -hmm. He didn't tell me much, but he drew me a picture where he was like, all right, I have this, this, and this in mind. Dope. I did not have much to work with, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I was like, bro, I, I fucking got your back no yeah. matter what. That's what's You up. know, it was, that, it was that faith. I was like, all right, I, I yeah. believe you. Yeah. Let's fucking and, and do it. it's hard to find that. I'm, yeah. It's hard to find that because it's hard to find someone that – Fuck it. Let's be real. He's not going to believe in you 100%, but if he gives you 70, 80% belief, that's enough. Yeah, bro. Because no one can understand your vision like you. Yeah. And vice versa. Mm -hmm. And that's why I work so hard. And I sacrificed a lot. And I never cried to anyone. Never told my dad. Never told my sister. Yeah, I might have got help. $50, $100 or something like that, yeah. right? But, like, I never was like, yo, bro, this and that. Like, I'm, I'm done. No, never. And so, like... Now, it's getting to the point where I'm seeing the future, and I'm like, all right, bet, my boys, and I'm doing the content at this time, and I'm still training at this time, so I still got my whole other life. Yeah, you still have you, And I your just whole had life? a son. Oof. And I just had a son. <laughs> so let me tell you, this is where it gets real tricky, because this is where you know I'm willing to take a, a, a leap of faith, and I don't care, because I, yeah. I believe in me. It got to a point where this big chief brand was about to go. And I seen it. And I was like, I had him talk. I said, hey, bro, I don't want to be the media guy anymore. I want to do bigger things. I want to make more money. I seen it. I'm making this amount of money, but I know I'm going to make more money with these guys. So I had to stop all that shit, training, competing. I was still doing videos for Big Cheap, but I was also everything else. Everything. I'm talking about we built this fucking brand, bro. Sometimes I forget what I did. I used to drive everywhere to dispensaries, smoke shops. I used to drive up north to Vegas. I used to go set up fucking tables, bro. Like, I used to do anything and everything because I was so locked in a big chief and my guys because I seen the passion and the, the work ethic that everyone was giving. I was like, I got to match that and some. Or else it ain't going to work. Because everyone here at this table are all dogs. We're all bosses. We're all young CEOs. So I'm not going to not fuck with this and not bring that same energy. I'm going to match it and be my own. And that's what I did, bro. And that was tough. Stopping this easy money so I could go make more money, but it wasn't then and there. Yeah. I went to hourly. Mm. I went from making eight to 10000 mm. a month to... 2500 every two weeks? Mm -hmm. Shit, I got a house. I got cars, a motorcycle. I got a son. I got my own expenses. I want to socialize. That ain't no money. 5000 a month? And I'm not knocking no one. I don't mean to disrespect. Yeah. I'm just like, this is how I think. You, you know what I'm saying? Because I come from no money. And I'm like, this isn't no money. But I locked in, bro. I was still doing everything. And then shit started taking off. Our brand started taking off. Shit started building. My whole team, we're all showing, like, crazy amounts of progress. I'm like, but we fucking, huh? You did not stay in your comfort zone. That's the thing. And that's, mm -hmm. we're, we're fucking big on that shit. Yeah, yeah bro. Yeah, because. We're super big on that. Cause nah, because I, I, I commend you, bro, and I praise you right now. And this is just so impactful when you're, you're hearing this com coming out of you right now. Mm -hmm. And everybody watching, I hope when they're listening to this, it hits them in there where, like, whatever they're wanting to be, pursuing to be, that they get that same type of ambition mm -hmm. and love. And and you can, everybody can go back on any podcast. And when we get 
very emotional about what the fuck we're talking about, mm-hmm. or you're going to hear it through the microphone. Yeah, bro. You can't fake this funk, no, bro. No. Especially when you know you came, how you said, you came from nothing. Nothing. And that's how I take pride in what we're doing and how we've been building, because we're, we're no social media guys. Yeah. Someone like one of our guys, shout out Pepe, he's like, man, you influenced us. Like, nah, bro, we're not there, bro. Like, I don't <laughs> feel that way. Mm-hmm. I'm like, why? Because when we started this, it wasn't to become an influencer. Now we're kind of taking that role, but at the same time, it's just, we built it. Yeah. We figured it out. Yeah. And it wasn't about luck. Yeah. You could get a lucky video. Cool. You you get one trending video, one trending sound. Cool. Amazing. Yeah. But what do you got? What do you have to follow that shit up? Yeah. I got all this because not, not one week went by that we said, fuck it, we're going to miss. Yeah. Not one week went by that we just said, fuck it, maybe not today, I don't feel like it. My world was crashing down, you didn't bro. make excuses. Hell no. My yeah. world was burning. Yeah. And I still showed up, and I let no one see that shit. Hey, look. What does that say? Exactly. Fuck, fuck excuses. Fuck excuses, bro. Yeah. Like you're bro. all in, bro. You're it, all it's, in. It's all or nothing. Yeah. And it's up to you to decide what that means exactly. and what that looks like. Exactly. I'm going to get myself a sweater like that. <laughs> bro, I got you. I'm, I'm going to remind myself. I'm going to be like, all right, let's yeah, do this. have to, bro. <laughs> it's... It, it's up to you to, to determine what all in means yeah. and what it looks like. Yeah. You you can say, oh, I'm all in, but if you only had $10 and you got to invest 10 but you only give 8 you're not all in. Mm-hmm. You're, you're, you're being too sweet with it. You're being too too safe. Yeah. It's not about being safe anymore. It's about, I see this. Yeah. Maybe right now it doesn't pay off, but I know down the line yeah. I'm going to work my ass off so that day it does pay off. Mm-hmm. And shit, here we are a year later. We're a year later. We've never missed. And I don't care what nobody says. Not I. We go out. We have fun. We do our thing. I have my mm-hmm. kids, but not one Monday is gonna miss this year that yeah. we're not gonna make it. Yeah. Whatever your whatever your excuse is, it's not mine. Right. Of course. I gotta show up. Yeah. Hey, we we gotta make this yeah. shit work. Like mm-hmm. the dynamic that we have here is is no matter if the night before we're up at four or five in the morning. We get one hour of sleep, but we gotta go do the show. We go do the show. Yeah. Because we make no excuses. Yep. And what a lot of people, <laughs> nobody knows, but we met at, in Covina. In Olas. In Olas. Yeah. Everybody that's from that city, they know <laughs> what Olas is. Hey, I'm not going to lie. Was it that day that I got super, Oh, you were tore up. I was, yeah, I you were super tore up. fucked up that day. I ended up taking him to the truck. I was like, yo, oh, wait here, big shit. guy. I'll come Bro, back. I had to go in, in the truck. And <laughs> I, had, um, I had a side job yeah. um, on the weekends. I needed some money and... Um, why are you laughing, bitch? Because <laughs> um, all I got was a text. <laughs> hey, fuck, can why? <laughs> Yo, I told him. I was at. The, I went to the restroom, and I was like, I noticed I couldn't. I couldn't anymore because I tried. I tried to go take a piss, and I was yeah. like, Oh shit, I can't even keep my balance. Oh fuck! So you're a fade, I like. I oh, I, yeah. I kind of sat down on, on where the sink was at, and I was like, Bro, I can't even walk, yo. Mm-hmm. I was like, We need a dip. I don't give a fuck who we're with. We need a dip, and we're yeah. with a couple of close friends. So I was like, we need a dip, bro. Yeah, they understand. I was Jeez. like, hey, uh, I took them to the truck. We you guys go. did leave after we talked. Yeah. yeah. No, you came back. Oh, yeah, because yeah. I was like, damn, I saw the bill. Yeah. So I got to go. But you know, th- this is how you know you're around the right people. Mm-hmm. You get back. They understand. They're, start- they're visualizing what's happening. And I was like, oh, hold on. Like, I got to go, but I'm going to get the bill right now. Mm-hmm. I'll-, I'll pay. You know, we're leaving really early. It's already paid. Oh, shit. Lit. I'm like... Wait, what? Right. Like, what's up? Like, well, how much? Yeah. Don't worry about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, yeah, those are the type of friends. Yeah, I bro. You know, like, when I don't got it, you got me. And when yeah. you don't got it, I got you. And yeah. there's no questions ever asked. That's love. Like, we're love. we're not going to go here and go eat. And then I'm going to be like, yo, everybody up. Uh, you right? Hey, it's going to be 25 each. You know? I'll hey, split we, the bill. Yeah, I'll like, split the bill. Hey, you got three drinks. Yeah. You had an appetizer and, and an entree. Yeah. Yeah, that was two hundred bucks. <laughs> hey, hey, remember, you got you got a fry from me, bro. Hey, you got a, a fry big, from me. A big question is if the bill's four hundred, right. and it's four of you guys, but you know you only got not even an alcohol drink, oh, just water. Shit. I know where this question is Just one going. entree. Do you split the bill evenly? No, I pay part? the bill. I've been in. I paid a lot of bills, a lot of thousands. <laughs> I don't care. I'm not doing the split the bill shit, bro. I'm not. I. I, if I'm in there and I'm eating and I fuck with you and I'm ready, to, I got it, bro. I don't care if it's $1,600, 3000 This might be the only time I'm doing it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I got it. But I got it. And yeah. I've done that multiple times, I think bro. I think we're all the same here. Obviously, 
we have our times where we have to pay the bill. Mm-hmm. It's not that we have to, it's that we want to pay the bill. Yeah. And we always have that one friend or, hey, you want me to sell you real quick? Yeah, I don't like what's that. It, what's, your, what's your answer on that? Hey, you want me to sell you real quick? What, what, do, you, what do you say? Not yeah, good, bro. I got it. And we're chilling. I just like, bro, whatever you want to do. I just always I'm say, chilling, bro. I was like, I'll just give me next time. So don't yeah, worry yeah, about yeah. it. Yeah. See, like, respectfully, I'm just in a different position where it's like, it's not nothing to me. But does it? But does that get misinterpreted in the people that get around you? Like, oh, well, DJ got it. DJ Burwater yeah, got yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Like, we. I used to go out a lot. DJ Burwater, huh? That's why <laughs> he laughed. I'm spending, He's like, yeah. I'm spending thousands in one night. Thousands, bro. Thousands. I'm talking about like what people make in a month. I'm spending in two two hours, hour and Jeez. a half. And I ain't cash. going out with you, homeboy. I ain't cash. going out with you. No, no credit card. <laughs> Cash, 5000 4000 8000 I'm spending that at a club, bro. And a lot of people who used to fuck with me or know me from association or through high school and shit yeah. see me doing big things, they want to pop out. They see me chilling with this guy or this guy or this artist or this celebrity or we're at this or we're at this, and they want to pop out. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, like if I fuck with you, I'm going to bring you out once or twice, and you don't, you're not paying for nothing. Like You're just going to enjoy your time. Yeah. Like, man, I brought you out. yeah. Because you're my guy, right? I yeah. genuinely fuck with you. But when you're in a position where you're doing too much, because I'm doing a lot, I'm doing good, and you just want to tag along every time, I can't do it. Like, I just know me. I know how to operate. You know what I mean? And because I know how to operate, that's where I'm at today. Yeah. You know what I mean? And shout out to my team. He's seen it. When I first brought him around, he's seen our office. He's seen we're really doing big shit. And that's the misconception. We're talking about it today. Like, a lot of people don't really know how big we're doing it. Come to my office. Come to our office. Come see what we're really doing. Go to go to hundred. Go, I think we're almost in like a couple hundred dispensaries in California, and we just went to New York, and now we're going to other places. Like we're not no little trappers. Like we're really somebody. Like yeah. you know, <laughs> not what I mean? the not the fools just signing out the the no, the gym bag out of the trunk bro, to and, and, in front and, of the Seven Eleven. <laughs> And, and realistically, I wish my boy came because him and his brother are the reason why I'm... It's not the main reason, but it's because of my hard work and what I bring to the table, where I'm at, where I'm at. Yeah. But these guys are the brains. These guys are the backbone. Like, we, like my boy MJ, bro, like, I'm going to say it right now. I tell him all the time, like, bro, like, my boy MJ is... This guy's going to... This is the guy, bro. And he's only, like, 20, 26, 27. He's the guy, bro, like... I would not be where I'm at today if he didn't believe in me. They gave me an opportunity, and I took the opportunity, and I succeeded. Right? You overdid it. I overdid it, bro. Yeah. Like they're gonna, they're it. always going to give you, all right, well, I want you to hit this goal. Yeah. And he said, fuck that. I got to get here. Yeah, bro. And and when I had that conversation with my boy, MJ, I said, watch me work, bro. I promise you. And, uh, bro, I <laughs> come on, man. Damn. I'm, I'm different, bro. Damn. And I'm not... I think and, everybody about to get into a dispensary after this no, shit. No, not huh? even that. It's hard, bro. It's hard. You need a squad. You need a team, and you need capital. And I'm only in this game because my people put me in a position. And everyone, there's like a small circle that we have, a very small circle. And we we only socialize with each other, and we only do business with each other. But everyone understands their role. Everyone understands their role, and that's the biggest thing. Talk about that because – I, I did want to, we, we talked about our goal this year, and since we have a lot of entrepreneurs on, on our show, it's talking about, you just said you need the right people, and you need capital. Right. What the fuck does that even mean for the people that don't know <laughs> what that means? Because I have a dream, bro. Yeah. But I got, you know what I mean? Right. So So it's just like, hey, well, how much do you have to invest in your dream? Right. Well, um, how much do I need, right? right. So it. When we took out the LLC, when we took out our business, it was like, yo, we're spending a lot. A lot. We need to right. buckle it down. We need to get this shit right. Because I always bring this up, but like someone told me, make your shit a business, make your dream a business, and it's harder for you to let it go. Why? Because now it's yours. Mm-hmm. And now when you look us up, when you look up a business name, it, they tell you what well, your business is worth. And you get that evaluation. Your business is worth X amount of money. Right, right. It's like a Barcel Sports. Right. They were worth... Couple they're hundred. Worth, now they're, they're worth a couple hundred million. Yeah, on their way to be a billion. Yeah, yeah so streaming is taking over. Yeah, so let's talk about that. Let's get to what does that circle mean to you, and and how does that business side work? Because everybody that 
that smokes everybody that that has ever sold weed in their life or were looked at looked at as losers by smoking. Right. Like you're not losers. We're not, no. We're you're successful, su- yeah. yeah, successful weed smoker. Legally. <laughs> Legally. Legally. Yeah. Yeah. How do we get there? How does this happen? So realistically, bro, like it, it's hard. It's hard. Like, let's be real. Because everyone starts selling weed or an ounce, or they buy a pound, they break it down, they think they're in the weed game. It's saturated. That's why I say, I always say we're legal. We're not no little trappers on the corner. You know what I'm saying? Because it's saturated. But realistically, bro, it's all about networking. Hmm. It's all about networking and being in the right place in the right time. But sometimes even the right time isn't it. But being in the right place is bigger than that. And then associating with the right people, creating contacts with the right people, because at the end of the day, someone could put you in a bigger place in a shorter amount of time than you could put yourself. Mm. And that becomes, and that happens, happens by networking. Yeah. And you know who you are, mm. right? You know who you are. I know who I am. So I want to be in that similar environment. Yeah. Me going to the local dive bar or the same club or the same restaurant with the same circle of friends that are working at 9 to 5 ain't going to get me to my big dream of being a boss and a CEO because they're nine to fivers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So environment, change that environment, bro. But fuck the environment. It starts with the mindset. If you don't believe in yourself, which I've said so much about how I believe in myself, if you don't believe in yourself, you're never going to see the vision. Your dreams aren't going to be a reality. The only way you're going to make that dream a reality is if you believe. See, I don't think nothing's impossible. There's always a way. Figure out how that person got it, then figure out your way of how you're going to get it. Then you figure out how to be consistent. Consistent means doing the shit you don't want to do when you're tired, when you don't got time. When there's an excuse that you could easily use, but you say, fuck that excuse, this is more important. Set your priorities straight. Then you figure out how you got better, but now how can I get even more better? Then you figure out how much money did I make. Let's be real. Financial is important. Super. Right? Yep. You figure out, all right, bet I made money this way. How can I make more money doing the same thing but better? All right, bet. Now this is better. This needs to be better. All right, bet. Now how am I thinking? How am I moving throughout the day? Mm-hmm. Am I waking up when I want to wake up or am I waking up early so I have more time in the day to be successful? Because we only have one life, bro. You don't need eight hours of sleep. You just need enough to wake up and keep moving. You're, dude, that, that's like... Oh, that's that thing. Fuck yeah. <laughs> because someone is like, oh, well, my, you know, my body needs at least seven, eight hours. No, you don't. No, you don't. Because what we've, everybody that's listening in, and if you're in mid-20s or older, if we think back at 18, 19, 20, or even high school, how many late nights did you ever fucking do when you had one or two hours of sleep and you still got up? Right. Uh, many. Right. Many. But why is it different now that now you're trying to pursue something? Mm-hmm. It's no different. Mm-hmm. Is this, does this mean something to you? Mm-hmm. If it doesn't, then fuck it. Give it up. Who cares? Mm-hmm. Like, that's why as the realest shit you're saying right now, if someone gets offended by their 9 to 5, don't be offended. Don't. It's just you're comfortable at 9 to 5. I'm not comfortable I'm not, at 9 to yeah. 5. I'm not a 9 to 5-er. Yeah. I've never been. It's just I had to suck it up. Mm-hmm. To get to where I'm at, mm-hmm. and then I realized, you know what, in order for me to, because I was working in selling phones, bro, I was at assistant manager position, mm-hmm. and they wanted, to, they wanted to throw me a bone, but that was used so much that it was shit, but going to a different lower-end store, and I was going to make less money? Mm-hmm. Mm, I was like, sense. don't make sense. So what I, I had to suck it up. Mm-hmm. I had to quit on this, quit two weeks. I was respect, quit two weeks. Started working for my dad because he's an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. And what a lot of people thought, and maybe they think when you start working for your parent, some parents show you love. Yeah. My dad was like, I'm going to pay you this. Mm-hmm. So I went from earning five to seven mm-hmm. a month to, damn, a half? The business is first. Yeah. And I was like, I'm earning half now? I'm mm-hmm. on a salary? I'm mm-hmm. on like, this is all I'm, I'm only <laughs> working three days now? Right, right. And I was like, all right, I got to suck it up. Yeah. But it gave me the opportunity to do more. And that's what a lot of people didn't understand. It's like I got rid of one job to take on two other jobs. Mm-hmm. And I love it. Mm-hmm. 
and we took on a third one. Now it's social media. So now, and and I always tell people, we we get paid to do what you do for free. Right. We just make something out of this. Right, now. Right, we right. add value to this. Right. Oh, well, value you know. Value is key. Yeah, like, you know what? Oh, you spend so much time on your phone. This is the money, man. Right. <laughs> this is how I get this to is people. How we make more money now. Yeah, how did me and you realize? Or how did we meet? Because social media social was media. a part of mm-hmm. it that when we ran into each other, Oh, I know who you are. I want to be there. I want to be with this motherfucker. And it's like, dude, understand the power that your phone has and the value you can bring. Mm -hmm. But if you keep setting yourself backwards and not the right time, shit, then shut your ass up and stay there, bro. Because Stay stay in the comfort zone. Stay in the comfort zone while we continue on to the promised land. All the stuff like that. And many people are like, oh, shit, you're just taking care of yourself and this and that. It's like, no, like. Obviously, I have to put myself first, yeah. you know? Like, I have to put yeah. myself first. Yeah, and I'm trying to win. He, he, he yeah, said he said bro. it before many times. He's like, if you're drowning, you have to put yourself yeah. first. You got to put yeah. your life jacket first yeah. before you help others. Yeah, I took that I took that from from Chris. Uh, shout out. Oh, there, Chris, there you go. From, from San Diego. And he was like, bro, imagine you're in, a, in an airplane crash, bro. And what happens when you're in a crash? All that, the life jackets, the mask comes on. But imagine you don't put yours on first because you want to put everybody else's. Right. But then your oxygen runs out. How many did you help out? Maybe a few. But imagine if you did put it on, how many more can you help out? It's that same shit, dog. Like, how the fuck are you trying to motivate other people yeah. when you can't, you yourself don't stay motivated? Right. Fuck that, bro. Fuck it's it. time to be you. It's time yeah. to be selfish. Selfish is the biggest thing, bro. Like, when I was like, uh, my son was born, bro, three, three and a half years. Talk ago. about that. Oh, oh my yeah. goodness. I was, was like, going to get to that. I had, that uh, it, I had, we had, had to. Had he, had he, he said was it born earlier. Right during COVID. Oof. Around COVID time, right? But unfortunately, for, fortunately for us, marijuana cannabis is essential. <laughs> yeah. So we're still grinding. I didn't take a day off, right? Yeah. And I was getting backlash from, or back, I don't know if the term, but. People were, and friends and family were telling me, like, bro, like, you're working a lot. Like, what about your son? And I'm like, yeah, my son was just born. I'm a, I'm trying to be in a position where I could be there for him whenever I want, but be financially set for life. Mm. And I had to be selfish. Mm-hmm. And no one understood that. You don't mind me piggyback sure. off of what you were saying. I don't have a kid myself. I'm 23 years old. That he knows us. I'm 23. That he oh, knows us. My Yo, guy's young. I'm young as He doesn't fuck. know that he has kids yet. <laughs> <laughs> they might be Son, have you seen this in 10 years? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just playing. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm fucking young. Um, how old do you think I was? Like 27. Oh, shit. A lot of people say don't that worry. shit. He's, don't worry. It's hey, it's but don't, uh, don't worry. People think I'm 26. Hey, don't worry. He, he says he's 27 either way. So I, I say we're out, the girls ask, hey, how old are you? <laughs> 27. I'm like, <laughs> I look at him, I'm like, you piece of <laughs> shit, <laughs> um, Like I was saying, <laughs> exposing me yeah, over here and shit. Like I was saying, bro, obviously, obviously I don't have a kid. Yeah. Um, my younger sister has a kid. My older brother has a kid. I'm the middle child. Right. Um, and it goes back to excuses, mm-hmm. exactly what your, your sweater says and what you were talking about. A lot of people put their kids. Exactly. And make their kids an excuse. Yeah. Like, No. You have to make your kid yeah. a reason why you're pushing forward right, right. while you're grinding every single fucking day yeah. to give him the life. And, right. oh, no, I have to stay home and take care of my kid. Oh, I have to, you know, give time. Okay, obviously, that's that's important. <coughs> you go to their homeboy. <laughs> this is hitting you. You're the home player. Oh, shit, 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 hit me, bro. <laughs> but it's shit, like, hit me. It's like they, that has to be your reason why yeah. you're pushing harder, why you're sleeping two yeah. hours a fucking night right. in order to get what you have to get done to give your kid and your family that life, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And obviously, I see that in you, bro. Yeah. And what Thank you were you, talking about, that's, that's very, very powerful. And yeah. it takes a lot of, I'm sorry to say this, but it takes a lot of fucking balls yeah, it does. to do it does. that. Because, yeah. bro, like, I was like, there's no way in hell my son or any kid I have is ever going to grow up the way I grew up. Like, I, w- I don't know how else to say it, but whatever it is, I'm that parent. And, and bro, I, I'm not going to lie, like, all the sacrifices of not being there in the beginning, bro, because I was looking at the bigger picture here. Mm-hmm. Bro, I wake up to my son almost every day, bro, and I control my schedule. I could work from home, bro. 
I don't have, oh, I got to go to work. Da, 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 da. No, hold on. Let me text my employee. Da, 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 or let me text the driver. Da, 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 da. Yo, yo, let me get this done. Da, 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 da. And, and I'm not trying to sound like extra. No, you just put yourself in a position where you don't have to do the same amount of work yeah. that you were doing when you started. Right. Because if you stayed where you started and you're five years forward now, then what did you do all those right. five years? Exactly. And guess what? We ain't there. I'm, I'm not there. <laughs> I'm making more money. I'm living a better life. I'm there for my son more than you anyone ever expected, bro. Mm. I control my whole day, my whole schedule, bro. Let me, let me, let me bring this up. When you enter the, the cannabis world as a partner, as a career, were you looked down upon no. by anybody? No. I'm getting, I'm, bro, I'm not going to lie. I don't really, I barely, we didn't even, we, I wasn't even really putting it out there like that. Mm. I'm just getting to it. Yeah. I'm like one of those people who don't want to talk about it. I'm just going to let you see it yeah. and let it speak for itself. Because I'm going to be honest, bro, I, I barely told my family what I was doing maybe a year ago. Because I didn't give a fuck. This is for me. Yeah. It's selfish. But for the right reasons. Because they weren't asking, look, till this day, I give money to my family almost every month. Till this day, none of my family members ever asked me how I got where I got. They just see the money, and that fucks with me. Mm. Because no one ever came from one. I'm, I can say this confidently, no one in my family has ever touched the amount of money I touch every month, every year. The amount of money I give to my family to make sure everyone's straight, I don't ask, I've never asked for an IOU. I do what I do for my family. I do what I do because I want to be that guy. But at the end of the day, bro, the fact that no one really knows how I got where I got, it's my fault. And I want it to be like that. Mm. Because I don't want you to know my every move. I just want you to know I got you. You know what I'm saying? So what was, what was that conversation you had to have with yourself on one of the motherfucking hardest days ever. Because if I care or if I create an excuse, that's alone a problem. When I commit to something, when I said I was all in every night for that period of time by myself, I'm all in. I've, ex bro, I don't know how to make it clear. I've accepted whatever, anything and everything. Whatever it is, yeah. I'm going to handle this shit. Because I, I have, like, I don't know if it's alter ego or confidence or, like, no one's going to see me down. No one's going to see me struggle. So I think because of that, yeah. and I carry myself like that, no one in my family's really ever asked what I went through to get where I'm at, how much I struggled, how much no food or money I had. Bro, there's a lot of shit. I used to pawn shit. I used to take the train. No one knew. I buy all this shit back. I pawn. I just, in the moment, I had to get by. I didn't call, hey, dad, hey, sister, yo. Da -da. I didn't give a fuck. It's me and God. Mm. Me, myself, and God, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's just like, bro, like, a lot of people don't got that. That will, that mindset, that, that selfishness. Yeah. Mm -mm. A lot of people don't got it. Nah, man, the first sign of struggle, they're running back. Yeah. The first sign of little turbulence, they're just like, fuck that, I'm yeah, going to quit. Done. It's not the right time. Not me. So do you believe there's ever a right time to no, start? fuck no. There is not. It's all about work. Don't put a time on something. It's good to have goals, but don't believe in the goal 100%. And the only reason why I say it is because I'm going to say, in 10 years, I want to be a billionaire. I might happen in four years from now. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I'm that the real ass shit I just told you. This ain't no cap. I didn't just say that. I told him, I tell other people, I'm gonna be a billionaire one day. A billionaire, not a millionaire. A million's easy. I'm gonna be a billionaire one day. All my family members is gonna be the most well off they've ever been. You feel me? Facts. And, and I'm saying that because I want that. I'm not doing it for no one. No one asked me that. I wanna do that. I want to. Would you say money changed you? Money didn't change me and helped me. Oh, God. Oh, fuck. 
Oh, hey, a toast. Hey, a, a toast. toast, a toast. toast. Yes. Money. God damn. Say that Yo, shit one more time, money, dog. Money didn't change me. It helped me, bro, because like I told you, I was making eight, ten thousand a month at some point. I'm drinking right now, so I'm going to say a little more than I should. I was like, you know what? Like, fuck eight to ten thousand. I want to make fifteen, twenty a month. Mm. Fuck that. I want to make this or this. When I, you get to those points, what is money? What is money, bro? Money what? is a, a, a point in life that helps you or doesn't help you. But money, if you use it the right way, can help you. And I use it the right way for pleasure and business. You know what I'm saying? But you can't be tied into money. You got to be tied into the passion. You got to be tied into your goals, your dreams, all that shit. You got to be locked in. You got to believe in it. And guess what? Money's going to come. Because you could be a trainer or you could be a videographer or you could be a boss. You can make money in all those three things. You just got to figure it out. You could be complacent. You could be content. Eight, ten thousand, that's a lot to people. That shit ain't, I'll spend that in one night. And I'm saying that because I'm a little lit right now. But am I wrong? Am I lying? I'm not lying. But whoever takes that the wrong way. Don't take it the wrong way. It's just, you have to understand where you come from and and, and what you've built. Mm -hmm. Because anybody that says, oh, you know what, that's too much. Well, I'm not going to spend that. Right. Hey, when you never had it and then you're in the position to do it. Facts. then you, And you're around the people you want to do this shit right. with. Hey, if today's bill is five grand and I'm around my loved ones, right. don't worry about it. I got this. Yeah. Let's, let's do this. Yeah. But I, I will make sure and I promise you that during the week yeah. we're about our fucking mm-hmm. money. Just because we spent five here doesn't didn't mean that we didn't make 20 over here. Right. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if we're going to spend five, mm-hmm. make sure you make 20, 25 on this side. And then, like, a lot of people get it fucked up. And I don't like talk about this shit. Like, I'm very low-key about this shit. When you see me in a club or a strip club, I mean, you'll see it. You feel <laughs> it? We're at church. But, uh, we're at church. church. But, like, we're seeing all, all, saying all bro, like, And I've said this earlier. Money, money didn't change me. It helped me, bro. Like, I could live life different, bro. But what I'm doing now is... I'm inv- we've invested money. I'm investing money into stuff that's making me more money. So now I'm not s- celebrating just life itself. I'm celebrating more success. Facts. Because, bro, like, I've been around. I've done this shit, bro. Like, I love it. I love the life. I love the lifestyle. Yeah. I love being able to just not give a fuck about any money. I love it. And I'm not playing right now. I'm being dead ass. What was, like, the most memorable moment that you did with your money that when you... Gave it or spent it, like, you had to take a moment, like, damn. So the biggest thing for me and what my number one motivation has always been to be able to give back. Mm -hmm. I see my family struggle the whole time, bro. Check to check. Some family members were good. But I'm talking about my immediate family. Mm -hmm. That's my biggest motivation, bro, to be able to give them money. You reach out to me, I got you. You don't owe me shit. You don't need that headache. I don't need the headache. I got you. Mm -hmm. Some of the best things I've been able to do with my money is give back to my family. You know what I'm saying? Show them a different lifestyle. Show them some nice dinners. Show them, you know, what do you need? You know what I'm saying? Boom. Don't worry about it. That's bigger. It's not about, bro, I have a house. It's not about that. I have cars. I have a motorcycle. You know what I'm saying? It's not about that. Like, it's about being able to help people that need the help. That's the bigger thing. It's not about me. It's never been about me. Part of it, I'll say 50%, but some of my biggest drive is because I want to be able to help my family, bro. Yeah. Because why do we deserve this shit? My dad, why does he, he raise five kids on his own? Why does he deserve that shit? You know what I'm saying? Like, why do you need to work, bro? I don't want you to work. In a few years, tell my dad, you don't need to work anymore. I got you. Work for me. You feel me? Yeah. Like, that's my biggest thing. Fuck everything else. Fuck shoes. Like, I've done it. Fuck clothes. Fuck clothes. Fuck all this shit, bro. There's moments, bro. You have, everybody goes through the moments. Yeah. From the moment you start getting money and you can do this comfortably and still do the rest good. And you have that moment because yeah. you, I feel like you never want to be left with, man, what if I did that? Yeah. What if I could have done that? Right. You know, if I would have done the thing about us now and me, my life now is like, I do everything that I want when I want. Mm-hmm. I just make sure that when I do it, it's calculated. Yeah. Calculated it, it, is the biggest fucking word, bro. Yeah. I, I'm. If I'm going to shoot my shot, it has to be calculated. Yeah. And if I fucking miss it, I'm going to go right back yeah, to it. And yeah. how did, what, what happened? Break oh, down cool. calculated, bro. 
In your man, terms. in my That's terms, that people don't realize. In my terms, when I say calculated, and and I'll bring, I'll make it so simple, bro. If I'm gonna make this action, I know the consequence to this. And I'm going to make sure that I know every single outcome that's going to come out of this. And for the people watching, it could be as simple as if you cheat on your girlfriend, mm -hmm. you know what comes. Right. If you get caught, you know what comes. If you call off of work, you know what comes. If you have no PTO and you call off, you don't get paid. You, that's the outcome. And if you don't get paid, say you make $100 that day, that's $100 less in your pocket. That right. means if your bill is this and you don't have those, you should have had those 100 Calculated, bro. That means you know every fucking outcome that comes out right. from that action you're about to make. We're not, we're not stupid, bro. We're we're not blind to this. We just don't want to hear it. Yeah, that's my calculated. Like I know by the time when I when I get up from here and we leave out of here, I know every little move that we're gonna make. I know the consequences to it, the good and the bad. And I'm a big Kevin Gates fan, and he says it. Whatever action I make. I am. I already made amends with those with those Facts. outcomes. Yeah, good or bad, it is what it is. If they're bad and I can accept them, mm -hmm. fuck it, run it. Yep. But if yep. I can't, if I can't take the the, doing it. I yeah. ain't doing it. But yeah. I'm moving on to something different. Mm -hmm. It's those people that, oh man, I didn't. What are you talking about? Bro? Yeah, you knew this shit before you even came in here. Mm -hmm. You knew if you ate like sports. You know if you didn't stretch out and you ate like shit, you knew you weren't going to perform. You're pulling muscles. Exactly. There it is, bro. Yeah. You you know that. Yeah. But what's the outcome? Right. What'd you do? Right. Did you give up? Yeah. Did you not think? Think before you act, right? That's that little kid phrase. Think before you act. Yeah. Oh shit! Yeah. That's what they that's fucking, what fucking meant. Man, exactly. That's what that yeah. bus driver said all the time, <laughs> dog. Yeah. But that's what to me what calculated means. Yeah. Does it have a similar or different uh, to you? But you can put it in your no, own words, bro. When I you you hit it right on the spot, bro. I mean, when I when I hear calculate or when I tell myself, it's like, bro, like I'm covering all angles. Mm -hmm. I'm not not ignoring something. Yeah. Because when you ignore something, that means you're not all in. Yeah. I love this. I'm yeah. all in. Bro. <laughs> there you go. I was just, bro. <laughs> Clip that. That's promo. <laughs> I, was, I was just, I was like, hey, yo. <laughs> no, no, all right, all right, look. All in, bro. Like, the reason why I created this brand is because, like, I love clothes, bro. I never had a lot of money to buy clothes, but I love it. Right? Same, same, same. But at the same time, when I was going through my struggle of trying to be an entrepreneur and find out my ways, I always told myself I'm all in. I didn't care what it was. I'm all in. And it goes with life. Any entrepreneur. Yeah. Any entrepreneur. You got to be in that spot. You got to be. And you might not. Some people might not even understand it. Because mm -mm. some people don't get it. But it's, it's a, a metaphor or a turn. And that's just who I am and all my circle is and what you guys are on. You guys are willing to do whatever it takes. You didn't really believe completely in this guy. But you're willing to sacrifice that doubt. Right? That inside doubt. I had 10% doubt on your home. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. 90% belief, 10% doubt. And he was willing to sacrifice the we're doubt. Gonna, we're going to cut off the third camera here. <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not going to lie, bro. He's, he's going to be on every other pod now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're going to do like a whole like kicking dinner uh, out of the podcast. That's the thumbnail for this. But one. Like, like, like you were saying, bro, obviously that 10% doubt. Yeah. What would have happened if we failed, bro? We would have been in the same fucking position same we were position. at. Same position. At yeah. least you tried. Then at least, yeah, you exactly. at least you fucking tried. You every failure. And that's the biggest thing that people don't understand. They create excuses to point the finger at themselves or their shitty life or their parents didn't put them or their parents, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's part of, nothing good in life comes easy. Here, here's this. And this is where you become a testimony to all of this, right? Did anybody show you the cannabis world before you entered it? Did anybody show you what... No. How to handle a million dollars? No. Did anybody show you financial literacy no. and financial, no. like, come on, nobody did this. Yeah, no one. Like, our, and I, now because we're part of, like, a school system, mm -hmm. like, I even, I, I try to share that knowledge, but I'm like, look, our school doesn't prepare you for yeah. this. Knowledge right now doesn't, sure. they prepare you for college, yeah. a degree, get a great job. Yeah. But that great job is only going to pay you so X yeah. amount. Yeah. Bro. And if you ask anybody, bro, if you ask Anybody that's working a nine to five that has a career that has a four hundred one k, did you ever imagine yourself doing this, or what did you always want to be? Right. Well, because 
But this happened. That excuse. Oh, hell no, it's bro. It's everywhere. So to circle back, like for our kids, I can't look at my, my son and my daughter's face and tell them, yo, pursue your dreams. Mm-hmm. When I know me, myself, I never did that. Mm-hmm. Right? I know now when we get to that age and we all get to that position that I could tell, like, yo, your dad chased his dream. Mm-hmm. And I made this work. Mm-hmm. I made this shit happen. Mm-hmm. What do you want to do? Yeah. Do you want to go to school? If you want to go to school, what is it? Why? Okay, cool. If you don't, what's what's next? Mm-hmm. That is it. I'm going to make you fucking earn whatever dollar, whatever 10, whatever whatever it is. By then, I know I'm going to be so far advanced that a big flex, and we had this, not an argument, but we had this conversation last week with other people. It's like, this this isn't for me in five years because this is I'm living a dream now. Mm-hmm. But in five years from now, I want to be home right. with my kids. Right. Making sure I'm there and I can still be making money from yeah. investments that I was making from the beginning. And, I mean, I just had to throw I had to throw it in there. And some people just hate it when they hear it. When you become a certain age and your kids become adults, what can you leave your kids that's not that you have to ask permission to someone else to give? Mm-hmm. I know I can give them this. Right. I can give them opportunities. Right. What can you give them? Advice? Right. Don't get me wrong. Advice is worth a lot, but why are you working so hard? Right. Though? Your kids can't have nothing? That's deep. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, we heard, I think it was like Breakfast, breakfast Club, right? I love it's that. Like, yeah. Right? There, there was one episode, I forgot what who, but he was like, can you give your son this? Yeah. Is this yours to give? This is us. Yeah. We could give this. Yeah. And if this is just a, a tunnel to different opportunities... And when we get to those different opportunities, like, hey, maybe we can give our kids this house. Right. Or give them this business. Or give them, or give them the, the foundation mm-hmm. and the financial to fund a business idea right, that they right. got. Yeah, bro. I mean, I'm, I've, I've said it. I'm changing the next generation. Mm. I'm not just doing it for me. I'm literally changing the generation. It's bigger. And we're exactly. not. Like, my son, if he wants to do another five, you do another five. But when he's coming in, he's going to see... That we have multiple businesses, and we and and I I'm never gonna give a handout. I'm just gonna show you what I'm doing, and you gotta earn it, cause I earned everything that's been handed to me, and nothing's been handed to me. I earned it. Yeah, you feel me? So nothing, everything that I'm doing moving forward is for my family, my dads, my son, my brothers, my sisters, my cousins, because I'm gonna be honest, bro. I look at my whole family. I'm like, none of you guys think like me. None of them. Shout out Mike Barron from San Diego. Exactly, bro. Mm-hmm. First time ever meeting him, and he gave us a rundown of his. He's a Ch- Chicano, uh, Filipino. 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 Sure Filipino, yeah. Grew up in the projects in San Diego. Multi-million dollar man. He's a million dollar salesman. He's going to close you a deal mm-hmm. and whatever. Put it this way. He drives a Lamborghini STO. Nice. He has a Lamborghini Urus. Mm. <laughs> and then he's, he well, a, he's well off. He's well off. He has well, a, yeah, yeah, he's yeah, super, yeah. And, and he's, but he works his butt off, bro. And he f- lets go of a lot of people monthly because they just can't keep up. Right. right. And when you're at that level, you got to keep up. Yeah. Like, whether you yeah, like him or not, you have, yeah. like, this is it. It's like, in every generation in the family, there's always that one. Mm-hmm. That one that is willing to give whatever it takes mm-hmm. To break the cycle yes, of family sir. wealth, to break that cycle of, hey, well, my grandpa, grandpa's grandpa, all did this, and now so I'm here. No, but why can't I be that one that changes the rest of facts, the generation facts. that's coming? Mm-hmm. So if I get to change my son, I hope my son changes the rest. Right. And now we're not in a, what it, maybe with this head of rest. My kids, kids, kids will never be broke. Mm, I love that. Yeah, I imagine that. that, bro. Like, imagine my that. Kids, kids, kids will That's never three, be four broke. Four generations from now. Yeah, yeah. And and it's what's the goal, right? Yeah. Like, what are you trying to do? Like, yeah. People that are entrepreneurs and trying to get that ideal. Like, if you haven't taken this yet from this show, this episode, go out and get it. No go matter what it. the fucking yeah, excuse is, yeah. all in, baby. All you in. Got, you yeah. gotta go all yeah. in. Yeah. All in. All it, in. It's. It has to be different to everybody, and it has to mean something to you. Mm -hmm. And I'm a big Eric Thomas fan, and he says it. Do it. If you can't do it for you, do it for somebody. Right. That means the world. Yeah. 
And if you fail, then what does that person mean to you? Facts, facts. I'd give this to, like, my high school kids, bro. I'm like, play for whoever you love the most. My mom, my dad, Create my that dad. that passion my is essentially exactly. what you're saying. Yeah, I'm tr- trying to, yeah. right? I, you can't bring it out of everybody, no. but you you yourself can at least try. Right. Like, you, I could try to show you that passion in my, and this is what I feel, this is what I want. I yeah. want to be this when I grow up, and I'm going to do whatever it takes. Right, right. I just can't say that's the same for you. Mm-hmm. Because we went through the trials and tribulations, and we're still going through them right. now. It doesn't mean that because we're here, all that shit ends. Mm-hmm. We're going through this shit now. Exactly. We're working through this shit now, no matter what the what whatever happens. Mm-hmm. If this shit shuts off today, tomorrow I'm coming back. Mm-hmm. I'm doing it again. Mm-hmm. I'm doing it in a whole different realm. Yeah. I can't say that for the next person. Can't, yeah. I, I can't make you want it more than I can. Mm-hmm. And you cannot make me want it than you can. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to worry about me. Facts. And if we meet at the fucking top, then we meet at the top. Yeah. And if you get left behind, then that was your choice. Yeah. I got to go. Yeah. And then that phrase comes. Man, you fucking changed, bro. Man, you changed, hey. bro. What the <laughs> fuck? I, I, bro, it's a, someone told me that. And he was a friend from high school. Mm. Um, we didn't get along very well. We were... We're friends. You know, you're high school friends. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Everybody has acquaintances. Acquaintances. Like, I know who he is. I know who he is. I know of him. On my personal page, I don't have much followers. I have like 1,600, 1,500 followers. I don't have much Mm -hmm. on Instagram. And I post sometimes where he, like, collabs with me. And it's like, and it's just, he's like, bro, you changed. And you're not the same anymore. I'm literally the same motherfucker I was in high school. Just a little bit more mature. In high school, I was just, I didn't give a fuck in high school. Yeah, no one gives a fuck. I I didn't give a fuck in high school. I'm sorry, but he's like, well, now that you got this social media kind of like back you up and this and that, he's like, you don't even hit us up anymore and this and that. And I'm just like, bro, if I would have stayed with you guys, I would have been in the same fucking position you guys were at. One of them is in prison right now. The other one is doing some trap shit. I don't know what the fuck he's on. The other one is trying to be a rapper. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying... Any of that is bad. Obviously, being in prison is bad. No shit. Right. But your grind is your grind, and you choose what you want to be in. If you want to be a rapper, if you want to be a little trapper, that's on you. But there's consequences to everything, bro. Right, right. Levels and, to everything. Yeah, and yeah. if you want to, try, if you're trying to drag me into what you're trying to do, it's never gonna work out, bro. Yeah, fuck that. You Did, know, you have the same friends as high school. Very few. Mm. I don't Very. think I have anyone, dude. Um, I create boundaries. I create boundaries with everyone because I know who I am and what I need around me. Mm -hmm. And I'm very aware of what I need around me. And that's the biggest thing because I'm, I'm not ignoring the fact of what these successful people tell you or preach about. Right. And I, and I've said it a little bit earlier and I didn't shed too much light on it. It's like when I started to do this and be this and be around this and, Doing this, it fuck whether if it's guys or girls, they want to be a part of it. But you can't be a part of it. Not everybody can come. Cause you didn't earn this shit. Yeah, so, hell no, nah, bro. And that's just what it is. And I, I might let you come fuck with me for one night, or if it's your birthday, come fuck with me. I got you. But like, bro, like I'm celebrating celebrating life with the guys or the people around me that've been here since day one. You feel me? And sometimes. I, and I'll shed light on this. I don't know if this... Sometimes people ask me, like, yo, where are your brothers at? Like, you don't party with them? I'm like, no, nah, they didn't earn this. And that's big to me because I bring them around sometimes, but it's not their life. It's not their lifestyle. They didn't earn this shit. So why am I showing them a lifestyle they can't afford or the lifestyle they didn't earn yeah. when they're going to go brag or talk about it to someone else? It's not their life. Yeah, in the moment, I show them a great time to be happy about life and see that they're big bros killing it. But I, 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 sh- I keep it away from them, bro. I'm being honest. Right. It's because it's different, bro. It's like, different. Our lifestyle is, like, me and Dylan can agree, our lifestyle isn't our sister's lifestyle, our yeah. brother's lifestyle. It's not. True. And there's few people that are keen to party with us and be around this type of this type of industry and, and life. And some of them are just like, damn, you guys do this all the time? Mm-hmm. Like, it's different, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, you really have to have a certain it in Facts. you yeah. that 
like you got to be up early and you got to be willing to go a little later, go without eating for a certain time, mm-hmm. make sure all this shit is done. And yeah. then once that all is done, then we get to the good part. Right, then right. we get to the fun part. Right. Let's go drink. Let's go right. party. Let's hang out. And when that time comes, don't just show up. Oh, show up later. What? Yeah. So we talked about so much, bro. Yeah. <sighs> talked about the business, the ambition, growing up, how landing here in Big Chief, the role, how, you know, there's still a lot of things that, you know, because the business partner isn't here that he could tell us, but you spoke a lot about it and what you personally did. Mm-hmm. You gave us your story. Mm-hmm. The most important, you gave us your version, your story, and that is yours. Yeah. Nobody else's. Right. What is one thing that you want the next generation to know? Everything you've been through, the trial, the tribulations, being in the cannabis industry, mm-hmm. what is one, like we go to, what's one thing you want them to know about the cannabis industry, mm-hmm. and then one thing you want to know about all it? So the world isn't what it seems. Mm. You could create your own destiny, bro. The world is portrayed to show you this lifestyle. But don't believe the hype. Don't follow that. Utilize, I always tell people, utilize that situation to create other opportunities. And that's just what it is. And I want my son or anyone else to understand that. It's like, you don't have to work a nine five like we said. You don't have to go to college to be successful. You know what I'm saying? You could be a millionaire without school. Mm-hmm. You just have to yourself know how to move, how to network, and how to make better life decisions. The second you understand that, and you find your why, you find your reason, you understand what you want, who you are, and you believe in yourself, bro. Come on, anything is possible. Correct. Anything is possible. And that's why I'm going to show my son. I'm going to show anyone else. The world doesn't want people to have, the world doesn't want a lot of entrepreneurs. The world wants a lot of followers. Mm-hmm. And that's the truth. Yeah. That's that how they keep the moving the, the truth, standards. Bro. That's a good the one. The real truth. And and I'm not going to lie. COVID created a lot of more entrepreneurs. COVID did. Yeah. And I love that. I love it. Because when there's more entrepreneurs, there's different lives. Yeah. And a different way to move, right? And honestly, bro, like, what I'm doing with All In is I'm showing my family and my friends that I want to put on some that they didn't see through Big Chief. Because now All In is mine, 100%. I have a team. I have Mike, or Mac, I have my boy Ruben, and that's it. All the money, all the, the – there, there is no investors. This is all my money. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? This is my vision. This brand is me. Yeah. All In is me, bro. And at the end of the day, bro, I'm going to show people what it takes to be successful through this brand and through my words. And at the end of the day, bro, a lot of people that there's a lot of entrepreneurs that want or a lot of people that think about what they want to do. They don't they don't understand that mindset, that mentality that you have to make to be successful, bro. And that's all in and all in isn't a clothing brand, bro. It's a lifestyle. It's a movement, bro. We're going to instill something in people that they can use throughout their life, throughout their day to day. And I love it, bro. Like, this isn't just me, bro. This is really a life that I want people to fucking take. You want them to acknowledge and, and remember, like Yeah, bro. It's there, bro. Yeah, it's, you're you're all in, bro. You don't shit. you don't know it, right? Mm. You I mean I, you you knew that you're willing to do whatever it takes, but like this brand creates that metaphor. Yeah. Right? It it gives you something like I know I'm all in, but this that I wear on my sleeve, um in the initials represents what I'm doing. Exactly. Yeah, because it's not, it, you're the creator of this, but anybody that wears this, I hope that they feel this. Mm-hmm. And when they when they see the fuck excuses, the all in, right. I hope they feel those words that, that they're reading. To, yeah. and, and it creates something. So you're yeah. creating something, how you said, for the next generation. For the next generation. Not you anymore. Mm-hmm. Not, you know, your friend. Mm-hmm. It's the ones that are coming. Right. Those are the ones we got to right. worry about. Why? Because there, there's there's a fine line that we all, a lot of people miss. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of things that people don't get taught. Mm-hmm. We're here to fucking say that. Yep. And we're here to show you. Hell yeah. It's, I'm not. I'm selfish for me, but I'm not selfish for the world. Mm-hmm. And that's different because you you got to be selfish to go chase after yours and be 
successful in your own terms. But like depending on your mindset and your mentality, bro, it's like, bro, like ultimately I told you and I told told you guys like I did it so I could help out my family. Yeah. And that was the biggest drive I needed. And it became bigger. And it's exactly. getting bigger, bro. I'm about to start something where I could put people on. I could pay them. Is so to I love our show because we're we're a quote based fucking mm-hmm. show, bro. Mm-hmm. People live life listening to quotes and remembering mm-hmm. quotes. True. Is there one that you can give us? Yeah. A quote that you remember or that you can just get off the top of your head? It's mine. Nothing good in life comes easy. You have to be willing to do whatever it takes to reach that goal or accomplish that whatever you came to life or whatever you thought about. Don't expect no handout because you yourself can make it happen. So the second you take a, take that doubt out, bro, just know that that's real. It's a reality. You know what I'm saying? Fuck all the doubt. Fuck all the other mindsets. You're yourself. You're your own person, bro. We all have our own life. Maximize that. Understand the truth behind that. The worth. Stop being a follower, bro. Create your own life. Live at your own terms. And if you don't believe that's possible, you're sleeping. You're still dreaming. Wake the fuck up. Because you literally can make as much money as you want. You can drive whatever car you want. You can wake up whenever you want. You can literally, whatever the fuck you want, you can do. But if you don't believe in it, it's never going to happen. Because it's too much doubt. And you're going to lose. I'm not a loser. I'm a winner. I'm all in. Ooh. Dylan, pour out the shots, my guy. Oh, pour out the pour, shots. I'm, I'm, pour out the shots. Jesus this, Christ. This calls for a triple shots right it here. It is, bro. <laughs> I cheers we're, you up on that, homie. Let's go. We're going to take a toast with the, the Casamigos to end Let's this. Let's do it. After this amazing long podcast, bro. Let's do and it. Full of fucking knowledge. This is what this podcast, podcast world is about. Spreading the yep. knowledge and giving the knowledge. Yep. It's not a, it's, it, we're selfish in how we got here, but we're not selfish to give this out. Exactly. But you got to be willing to yeah. listen. Hey, you are, you, are you guys going to smoke when you guys come on to, to, to be blunt? <laughs> as long as my parents don't, as long as my oh. parents don't see this, I'm down. Bro, uh, you guys got to smoke at to be blunt pod, bro. No, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. My, my mom right now, she, she's, she needs it. She has, she has like, I, I don't know exactly what she has, but she's like under so much stress right uh-huh. now. She needs it. She has like this pain on her foot. Oh no. And chronic pain or what? I think it is. At that point, I think it is. And, um, let me pour it. Let me pour a homeboy shot real quick. Oh, yeah. Oh, my I fault. I got no shot. You trying to chill with yeah, no shot. Uh, DJ Burwater poop. ready to be um, Burwater. Then it over here <laughs> pouring <laughs> up a waterfall. I've, I've lived with my parents for a while. Okay. Um, there's a there's a moment in life where I separated from my parents. I lived alone. Uh-huh. And when I came back, I kind of had that same, you know, schedule where I was like, oh, I can, I can, I used to smoke back then. So I was like, I used to smoke and this and that. And my, my dad was the one that caught me with the stizzy. Mm-hmm. That was the worst fucking day of my life. Yeah. <laughs> Is it like but, how um, like your cousin got caught the other day at oh, Christmas? Yeah. <laughs> so he came over. He came over to my dad for for Christmas, and um, because the way to go smoke. My cousin's one. a big smoker. Yeah. He's he's way younger than me. He's like nineteen. No, he's still in high school. He's a sophomore in high school. Mm-hmm. I think he is. Crazy. And um, my cousin's my 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 cousin was like, "Yo, he's gonna go smoking this and that." And I was like, "All right, let him do him. I don't give a fuck," you know. And um, my uncle caught him. And he noticed. <laughs> he comes back and he's just like a serious face. <laughs> he comes out he's just straight oh, face, faded. you know, this and that. <laughs> faded in trouble. But, um, <laughs> he's a sinner. Right, but back to, he's a sinner. So you're not going to Back to what we are saying. I mean, my Hispanic family, I, I'm first generation here. My, right. my so, parents are immigrants. Okay. I'm first, first generation here. When my dad caught me with that stizzy was so fucking bad to him. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. I don't know what type of weed. My, my dad smoked weed yeah, before yeah. he's told me. But in Mexico, I don't know what type of fucking happen. weed he smoked. It was like weed that was oregano, LSD, or whatever the <laughs> fuck it was. That he had like a bad trip on it. So when he caught me smoking weed, he it just was, fucking yeah. he, he got off yeah. on me. Wait, so bad. to the, his question: Are you gonna smoke? Are you, you go to gonna smoke? I'm gonna fucking smoke. Yeah, yeah. yeah just don't make me fall asleep, dog. I just don't want to fall oh, asleep. Yeah, that, that's one thing. When I'm a I'm a very chill guy yeah. inside. Uh-huh. 
So when I smoke, I tend to just doze off and fall asleep. Yeah. <laughs> so if you can help me out with that, if I you can't. Have a strain, I can't. You maybe one hit max for you. <laughs> I, I'll I'll do I'll do four hits. The first, hey, look, I'm smoke, not, I'm not, smoke the weed I gave you guys. All right. And then you decide where your tolerance is. Got it, got it, got it. You know what I'm saying? As long as we get to bring the happy dads yeah, over each no, other, bro. Babe, bring it all. I'm, I like to drink. I'll, we'll have our tequila too, bro. The, the first time, the first time I, I smoked, the first fucking time I smoked, it was in high school and where we're at a homeboy's house. Mm-hmm. Wait, wait, save that for the pod. Mm-hmm. Save that for the all right, I'll say, I'll say that for the There you go. So I can share, I can share my, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I can share yeah, my story when I want to see Kevin Gates. Say less. But, man. DJ, I, man, this has been fucking crazy. Been great fucking pod. Amazing. amazing. Great pod. This, I know this is going to help out a lot of people. Shout out Big Chief. Yes, sir. Shout out yes, All In. Yes, sir. Man, shout out your guys' podcast. For the people that to don't be know. Blunt. Yo, shout out To Be Blunt, bro. Uh, really, our, our podcast is really genuine knowledge and weed-based type shit. But real, realistically, we started this podcast, bro, because we, we come from nothing. My boy Big Chief has his own story i have my own story but we built something that's really unimaginable a really dream bro like yeah. we come from nothing bro and we built this shit my boy lit like i love my guy mj and mo and the whole squad bro but i'm telling you right now like don't sleep on us we're gonna be one of the biggest cannabis brands internationally bro like we really do this. I, I shit. don't doubt you, bro. I don't no, fucking doubt you. Do this shit, bro. Hold on to your fucking season. Yes, coming, sir. Bro. Hey, hey, wait for go. all in, bro. I'm telling you right now. I'm gonna say this very confidently. This brand is gonna be one of the biggest brands, literally, bro. Like just based off all your sweater, bro. I fucking believe that shit. <laughs> hey, hey, his hey. sweater goes fucking. And the way you say oh, everything, you. bro. The way you you know what someone means when they say it. Really, exactly. Though. And we got we got yeah. the messers out of here. Hey, day. believe in manifestation. Yes, sir. We're leaving that. Mandatory. Yo, it's us alive. A toast to life. A toast to everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Let's go.